So, uh, good afternoon. My name is Christoph Mayer. I run um, a seed fund in Berlin called Food Labs. Uh, we back entrepreneurs across Europe who tackle some of the key challenges of our time. Uh, we focus on food and sustainability. So, uh, food accounts for around a third of the green emission worldwide. It's probably one of the areas where we can have the biggest impact now. Um, at Food Labs, we have a strong thesis around fermentation. The vision is to produce local, sustainable, tasty, uh, affordable food uh, and healthy food through fermentation. We, we like to call this thesis fermentation farmers as a new farmers. And we're lucky to have here today three of the leading fermentation farmers in Europe. Uh, uh, Kate from Microharvest, Roman from Formo, and Mazen from um, Mashlabs. So to start with you, Kate. Uh, so you are producing actual ingredients, uh, focusing first on um, animal feed. Can you please tell us a little bit what is different about what you're doing and why is it potentially so effective? Yeah, so we focus uh, on, on feed. So actually what we do is that we grow bacteria and the bacteria, you all know them already. You all eat them daily in your yogurt or in your kimchi because we already use them. But they are actually very, very efficient protein, little, little protein factories. So we grow these bacteria. They contain up to 70% of protein. And then they can be used just as they are as a protein source, as an ingredient for feed, for pet food, also for food. Um, we focus on the feet, also because of regulatory, it's a bit easier to start there because it's a hurdle. Um, but also in feet, the th one thing that you need is volumes. The amount of feet that is needed in the world is huge. Um, and we have the fastest protein production system in the world, so that matches nicely. And how sustainable would you say it is, or to put it in, in understandable terms, how much CO2 would you save per ton of feed that you're producing versus status quo? So at the moment, if you just compare to soy, which by itself is already a very sustainable source, and if you compare it not using any fertilizers, still we, per ton of feed, we save uh, 12 tons of CO2. So it's really making a big dent. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Mazen, your world is the world of mycelium, uh, which are the roots of the mushroom. Uh, I know you produce very tasty food. Uh, now tell us a little bit why do you think this is a breakthrough and will have a big impact on food in the future? Yeah, um, thanks for, for inviting me to be here. Um, we believe that uh, mushrooms will really play a very significant role in the future. Uh, Mush Labs is unlocking the full potential of these mushrooms. Um, especially mycelium is very exciting because mycelium does not only offer protein, it offers a lot of fibers, a lot, it offers a lot of vitamins and minerals, things that are um, essentially missing from our everyday diet. How mycelium grows is also in nature very interesting because mycelium can grow on um, um, waste in nature. So you could think of wood logs where you usually see mushrooms growing or uh, um, anything of that sort. We have identified how we can mimic how mycelium grows in nature, put it in the lab, and we do that by giving it feedstocks from the agri-food industry. Meaning any food company that produces waste as a byproduct um, still has value in that waste. We're able to take it and uh, create a circular approach to use it and grow the mycelium on it. So I believe Europe has, has kind of waken up to the issue of food security, to the unfortunate event in the war. Um, just to give us an idea, uh, I believe your solution is, can be a key to solving food security. And just to give us an idea, how big of a production factory would you need to feed to provide all the protein that, say, population of Zurich uh, requires? Um, that's the exciting thing about the technology. I would say we would be able to, with a, 
um, field that size of the room, a little bit maybe bigger, we would be able to produce enough food for the population of Zurich. Excellent. Roman, what you do is even one step further when it comes to science. Uh, uh, you in the field of uh, synthetic uh, uh, biology, focusing on cheese. Now, we in Switzerland, and we have this, I grew up with this romantic view of uh, mountain pasture. Uh, tell, me, tell us a little bit what's wrong with that picture and what are you solving for? <clears throat> So um, the problem with the food industry is systemic, right? So it has impact on all aspects, whether it's sustainability or whether it's health or it's animal welfare. For the animals specifically, I mean, we deeply care about the animals um, and we are talking about animal welfare. So um, we are talking about the um, decreasing life expectancy for, from uh, cows in animal agriculture, but more specifically, we are talking about the impact that animal agriculture has on our planet. So uh, just to mention a couple of figures, uh, I mean, 80% of global farming land is used for animal agriculture, while it only yields 20% uh, of the calories, 30% of the fresh water use, the global fresh water use is used in animal agriculture, and animal agriculture alone is responsible for 15% of greenhouse gas emissions. So when we look at the food industry, what is really fucked up about it is our dependency on the animal. And, and tell us a little bit how you solve that and give us a, a layman description of synthetic biology as well as how are the end products. Sure. Um, so instead of, instead of cranking up cows into little cages and taking away, away their calves um, and taking their milk, we train microorganisms to do the job of cows. So basically what we train the microorganisms to do is to convert um, a medium into the required ingredients which we are looking for, so whether that's proteins or even fats, in order to create real bioidentical cheese, but without the cow. So the three of you, I, I believe that you are some of the most advanced company in your field, certainly in Europe, uh, and, and going to market uh, within the next 12 months or less. Um, give us a little bit uh, a view on your 10-year perspective. You know, how do you think that what you're doing is going to transform the food value chain and the food industry? Maybe starting with you, Madsen. Um very simple, we started doing it today. We can really uh, um, create partnerships with food producers across the world. We already started doing it with a brewery in Germany where we can take their waste and we can um, repurpose what the brewery usually does, which is beer, and now do mycelium growth inside it. And once this first step in, is done, in 10 years, it's very um, highly likely that we would be able to uh, produce food across all continents uh, by working with different breweries across different continents and by that decentralize a supply chain system that usually today is very broken. So thinking about decentralization, how do we produce food where food is needed and how do we create products that are needed in that local, um, local population will become something very tangible in the next five to ten years for us. So. We're not talking about a first world problem. Do you see what you're doing, applying to country with a lower, uh, uh, um, with a lower GDP? I mean, are, are the stuff that you're doing, are these luxury product, or is this something that will apply to Asia and the rest of the world? Um, I really <coughs> believe uh, it's, it's a global solution. So one thing I think which is very interesting about biotechnology, as Maza mentioned, is that we can produce decentralized. So instead of having one huge factory in Europe, one huge one in China, and one huge one in Asia, we can produce locally using the locally available side streams that are there, really producing the products that are needed there. And I think especially with micro-harvest, the protein is an ingredient. And as I mentioned, it can be used in feed, it can be used in food, it can be used in pet food. So you can really create the products and the ingredients that are locally needed. Uh, and you do it in a cost-competitive way because of the scale uh, that you can produce it at and because you can use the locally available resources. Roman, do you have a last word? Yeah. 
um, I mean, um, to, to put it short, I think what we are doing in the short run is we are matching taste, we are matching functionality, and we are matching um, nutritional value. But in the long run, going 2025 and beyond, we will undercut conventional, um, convention, conventional animal-based products, and thereby it will become a global solution for global problems. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. I hope we could share a bit of our excitement around fermentation farming. We believe we are the beginning of a true revolution that will help us tackle food security as well as sustainable while caring for human health. Thank you. Thank you.